Hi, and welcome to the second video in our Introduction to Literature Searching series. Last time, we learned about the different types of research literature on the Pyramid of Evidence. We were also introduced to research databases like CINAHL and PubMed, and learned how to find them on Kornhauser's website. Today, we're going to learn how to use PICO to develop an effective search strategy. By the end of this video, you should know how to select search terms, how to come up with synonyms for your terms, and how to connect them using Boolean operators. From your classwork, you should already be familiar with PICO. PICO is a mnemonic device used in evidence-based practice to frame and answer a clinical question. It includes all the components you need to ask a well-thought-out question, including P, which stands for patient, problem, or population, I for intervention, C for comparison, and O for outcome. It should be noted that not all research questions have a comparison. So while you should always have a patient problem or population, or P, and an intervention, or I, and have a hypothetical outcome, or O, in mind, you might not always have a comparison. You might have also learned about PICO with a T at the end for time. While you may have a time frame in mind for your own research project, it is rarely useful to search for a time frame in a research database. The great thing about PICO is that it's not just a way to frame a question. It also helps you generate the terms you'll need when you're searching. Let's say, for instance, that we're interested in finding out if bed alarms help reduce falls in hospital inpatients. Breaking down our question into PICO components would look something like this. Hospital inpatients are our population, bed alarms are our chosen intervention, and our targeted outcome is reduced falls. We have no comparison in this question. By simply breaking our PICO question down into this chart, we have identified our three major search terms, with one minor edit. You wouldn't search for the term reduced. You would just want to search for falls. This is because the outcome is only an assumption at this point. While it's unlikely, we could conceivably find that bed alarms increase or at least have no effect on falls in our patients. So we wouldn't want to bias our results by only searching for reduced falls. So now that we have our search terms, we're ready to jump in and do a search, right? Wrong. We still have some minor work to do. To build an effective search, you need to identify synonyms. Synonyms are words that are similar to the ones from your question. Why do we need to do this? Because synonyms can make searches comprehensive. For example, think of all the ways I could use to describe cleaning my hands. I could say hand washing, hand sanitizing, hand disinfection, hand washing as two separate words, or hand sanitization. That's five different ways to describe the same concept. If I had just searched for one of these phrases, I might miss out on a whole bunch of articles that used the others. So synonyms are key in helping us make sure we find absolutely everything that is written on our topic. Sometimes coming up with synonyms is easy, and sometimes it's a bit more challenging. And sometimes you're searching for something that is so unique like a drug or a surgical procedure, that there aren't any other terms to use. And that's fine, as long as you try and think through each of your concepts before giving up. When we look back at our terms, we might consider the following synonyms. And now that we have the terms we'll use to search ready to go, it's time to learn how to combine them into an efficient search strategy. To connect terms together, in a database like PubMed or CINAHL, we would use words called Boolean operators. These terms not only link our search keywords together, they determine the relationship between the words and tell the database what we want it to do with our search. There are three Boolean operators, and, or, and not. And is a limiter which means it limits the results you get back fairly narrowly. For example, if I search for peanut butter and bread 
and Jelly, I will only get results that include all of these terms. So I would only get results back that feature peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Or is the opposite. It's an expander. So if I search for peanut butter or bread or jelly, I'm saying that I would be happy with results that include any of these terms in any combination or on their own. So I would get back peanut butter sandwiches, jelly recipes, bread recipes, jelly and bread sandwiches, and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Not is an excluder. So if I asked for peanut butter and bread, not jelly, I would get results on peanut butter, peanut butter and bread, and peanut butter sandwiches, but nothing at all on jelly. I do want to encourage you to avoid using the term not when searching because you can accidentally end up excluding literature that you don't mean to. So concentrate on using and and or instead. The first step in combining our terms together is to connect our synonyms together using or into separate, unique search strings. So we would have a different search string for all of our different synonyms in P, I, and O respectively. We link our synonyms together with OR because OR is an expander. We want to find as many different articles on this topic as possible, so we want to give as many terms as possible in order to get the highest yield back. Connecting our synonyms together with OR would look something like this. All of our similar terms are linked together with OR while remaining in their own separate strings. Next. We use AND to link our separate search strings together, which looks something like this. This limits our search by saying we need at least one term from each of our OR strings returned in our results. So I would be happy with results that included hospital inpatients and bed sensors and fall prevention, or articles with hospitalized patient and bed alarms and falls, or really any combination of these words, as long as at least one of the terms from each OR string is included. Now that we know how to combine our terms together, we're ready to begin searching research databases like PubMed and CINAHL. We will cover this in our next and final video.